Hi, this is Erin Peliquin from MCP Actions. Today I'm going to show you how to install our Present It for Print templates into Lightroom. These templates work in versions of Lightroom beginning with 3 and 4, and they are installed into Lightroom's print module. The first step in installing your templates is to go to the print module and create a new user template. Now it doesn't matter what the template looks like, you just need to create the first one so that Lightroom will allow you to install other presets after that. To do that, again here in the print module, you want to look for the template browser on the left hand side of your screen. Click on the plus sign, make sure that the folder user templates is selected, and then the template name doesn't matter. You can name it first template or sample or whatever you want to. Next, you'll want to open the folder where you're going to install these presets. To do that, go to the Preferences menu of Lightroom. On PCs, you will access that from the Edit menu. On Macs, you'll find Preferences here on the Lightroom menu. So after opening Preferences, you're going to click on the Presets tab and then click on Show Lightroom Presets folder. You'll see that your Finder opens up to the Lightroom Presets folder, or if you're on a, a PC, your Explorer will open. Within this Lightroom folder, you want to open the Print Templates folder, and this is where you're going to install the templates that you have downloaded from MCP. These templates are probably in your Downloads folder, unless you've already saved them somewhere on your hard drive. So my presets are here in my Downloads folder. When you purchase these presets from MCP, you will see that they are in zip folders. They say zip at the end or they have a zipper icon, something to indicate that they are compressed files. On most computers, you can simply double click to open the zip file. But in some cases, you might need to right click and select extract or unzip or open or something like that in order to decompress your files. So once you have them unzipped, you'll see that they look like regular folders now. And within this MCP presented for print folder, you will find seven individual subfolders. It's these seven folders that we want to copy and paste into Lightroom not MCP present it for print. You only want to copy the folders that begin with zero, so zero one through zero seven. So in order to select all of them, I have clicked on the first one. I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on the last to select them all. And then I'll right click, select copy seven items, and then return up here to my print templates folder where I will right click and select paste. Now, instead of right clicking, you could type in Command or Control C to copy and Command or Control V to paste. Or you can go up here to the Edit menu, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, and select either copy or paste. So now that you've got the files pasted into the appropriate print templates folder, you close your finders or explorers and restart Lightroom, and you'll be ready to use your templates. Okay, so you can see that Lightroom has opened again, and I now have my new folders here in the print module. Um, you can see those folders 01 through 07 that I installed. So the way these presets are organized within Lightroom is that we have a separate folder depending on the size of the template you're going to build. So we've got 5x7s that are for either printing 5x7s or even postcards, senior rep cards, marketing materials, things like that. And then we've got 10x20s, 11x14, 16 by 20 20x24, 20 and 20x30, finally ending with square layouts, 20x20. 20 20. Um, so you'll see, for instance, in folder number 7, 20 by 20s also can work for any other print size of the same aspect ratio, whether that's 12 by 12 or 5 by 5. So in parentheses, after the name of the folder, we've given you the equivalent aspect ratios that you can print using these templates. 
So we're going to start today by building a 10 by 20 with three vertical photos. Once you open the folder for each print layout, you can see that within parentheses is the number of photos available for that layout, um, as well as their orientation. So for instance, this one has two photos, one of which is vertical, the other is horizontal. This template has three vertical photos in it. This is the one that I'm going to use today. To add photos to a template, you simply click and drag. So you click on a photo and drag it over the photo cell where you want it to be placed. And when the outline of that photo cell turns yellow, you release your click. You do that for each photo that you want in your template. And so now I've got three templates. Say that I want to change the order or use a different photo in one of the photo cells. I simply choose that photo and click it back into the photo cell that I want to use. So changing the order or changing even the photos is as simple as that. Now once I've got the photo in the cell, if I want to rearrange it, I hold down my command key on a Mac or my control key on a PC. That turns my cursor into a hand, and once that hand is visible, I can move the photo up and down or side to side if the photo is big enough. So that is how I tweak the settings of the photo within the frame. Now, if I want to crop a photo so that I zoom in more or want to change the composition, due to limitations of Lightroom, I do that within the develop module. So let's say that I want to take this photo and zoom in a bit on it. I'm going to go to the develop module. And I'll start by creating a virtual copy of this photo. So I'm not changing the original. So to do that, I right click on the photo and select create virtual copy. And you'll see that a new photo is added to the film strip and the one that is selected has the word copy number one. So that indicates to me that I am not changing the original. I am just editing the virtual copy here. So I'll select my crop tool and I will crop until I'm happy with the image. And then I can return to the print module and grab my cropped virtual copy and drag it into the cell that I wanted to use. Now you can see that these templates default to having a white background. I can change that if I want over here in the page panel on the right side of the print module. I just click on this color box next to the words page background color and a color picker pops up. Right off the bat, I can toggle between black and white or even gray. I can select from a color wheel too. Now all I'm seeing right now is a black to white gradient. If I wanted to change that, I would simply click in this red field and put in any number other than the one that's currently there. So just by changing this to a 10, I now am displaying this color wheel and I can select from any color on it. I can also use this eyedropper to choose a color from within the photos itself if I wanted to match my background to the photo. So the way that I do that is I click within the color wheel and without releasing my mouse, I drag over to my photo and pick up a color that I want. So it could be the pink of her skirt, it could be the green outside the door, um, whatever color I wanted to match. So I think I might go with something like that. Once I'm happy with the color, I can turn off the page background box. I can now adjust the strokes or the frames around the individual images. To do that, I go to the inner stroke box. Now, if I don't want a stroke at all, I can turn it off. Or if it's on, I can change the color by clicking on this color box, and then I would go through the same technique here. I think that a white stroke looks great. Then I can change the size of it by adjusting this width slider so I can make it larger or smaller, whatever works for my images. 
The last thing you might want to do before finishing this template is adjust the sharpening. So you can see down here in the print job panel that we have sharpened these photos at a low amount for matte paper. If you're using glossy paper, you would simply select glossy instead from this drop down menu. You can also choose low standard or high sharpening if you need more sharpening. Now the best way to determine which one of these amounts to use is to do a few test prints and get a feel for what the test prints look like compared to the appearance of sharpening on the screen. This sharpening does not replace any sharpening that you might do in the develop module. What this particular sharpening does is it adjust the sharpening depending on the type of output that you are going to use for this template. Um, so in this case we're saying that the output is matte paper. So after adjusting sharpening, if that was necessary, you'll want to hit print to file, which will give you this save as dialog. You select the location where you'd like to save your template and then you name it. Select save and you now have a high resolution file that is ready to be uploaded to your printer. So I'm just going to reset that by clicking on the template to go back to the beginning. Even if you select something like 5x7, which you probably can fit on your printer, note that when you create a 5x7 template, for instance, your printer is tied to a certain size piece of paper. So even if we sit, switch this to printer, it's still going to default to the last size paper that you printed at home. So again, you can tweak that using this page setup, um, but it's going to take some serious tweaking. So for best results, you will use these templates to send to print labs using the JPEG feature. The last thing that I want to talk about before concluding this video is that you need to have all the photos that you want to put in your template in the film strip at the same time. So if the photos that are on your hard drive are not in the same files or folders on your computer, you will need to create a collection. You can see that within the print module there is a collections panel and I've actually created my own collection for this video called install templates. So you can make your own collections by starting in the library module and scrolling down to the collections panel. Once you're there you're going to click on the plus sign to create a new collection and then we will name it whatever we need to name it. And note that if this check mark is turned on, include selected photos, then whatever photos are highlighted are going to be automatically added to this collection. So I'll hit create. You can see that I have a new collection called Farmhouse with this photo in it. Then I can go to other folders from my folder section up here in my Lightroom library module and I can select other photos to add to um, this collection. So for instance, if I wanted to add this picture of the fruit, I could simply click and drag right into the farmhouse collection. If I'm in my grid view, which I get to by typing the letter G, I can select multiple photos. So I could click on one and then hold down my command or control key to click on the second one. This way I've got multiple photos highlighted that I can add into my collection at the same time. Once they're highlighted, I would right click on the collection and say add selected photos to this collection. So once you've got your collection full of the photos that you want in your template, you simply go to the print module and you are ready to make a new print module with these photos. So once I'm in the print module, I can just make a simple template just like this by clicking and dragging my photos. So that is how you install and use the Present It for Print templates into Lightroom. If you have other questions, make sure and read through the PDF that came with your preset download. We've got lots of detailed information on how to really get the most out of these presets in that PDF. 
We also have other videos if you're interested. Uh, we've got videos that tell you how to rotate the orientation of a template. For instance, if you wanted to take this one and have it going vertically rather than horizontally. We have templates on how to use the identity plate and watermarking features. We have a template will, that will show you how to use paper, like custom digital scrapbooking paper as your background, or even how to put color blocks in the place of photos. And finally, we've got a video on troubleshooting. So if you run into any issues with these templates, the troubleshooting video might help. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your new templates.